yes. Okay, yes. All right, welcome everybody to our Tuesday evening Bible study. We are glad to have you. Uh, let me make sure that Kaista is in uh, before I begin. Welcome, Kaista. We are here. We are glad to have you. We are just about beginning, so you haven't missed anything. Welcome to those who are on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere else. Uh, we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that this evening as we come, you will just open your hearts and your spirit to the word of God as we try to digest what is being taught here. So let's just bow our heads and ask God's guidance. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful privilege for us to come together in this fashion right across the airwaves and wherever you are in your living rooms, in your bedrooms. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to share the word of God. We pray now that wisdom and revelation and understanding and enlightenment Lord God will pervade that as we come, we will understand, we will increase in our knowledge of you. We pray, Lord, that as your people uh, hear the word, that it will take root in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for every single person that is connected here as we study. Lord, may they get a revelation of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will meet needs in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, we welcome all uh, from everywhere. Um, we welcome um, those who are visiting and we, are, we see some uh, regular visitors and we see some, some friends as well. We welcome um, uh, Pastor Greaves as well, I see you. Uh, so, we are in the book of Daniel, and we have been having a really engaging time, and we're going to pick up where we left off. I want to welcome our pastor and turn it over to him right now. Thank you, Pastor Robin. Pleasant good evening to you all, and those who join us by way of Facebook and YouTube and other social media. What a tremendous privilege it is to be able to share your device, to share your space, and for us to just dissect God's word and glean from it. It's a tremendous honor. Uh, uh, let me just plug this in that uh, Pastor Greaves is, in, is here with, in, in South Florida, and he will be our guest speaker for Sunday. For those of you who are in the South Florida area, uh, please, we also be having a special um, pre Valentine uh, dinner after church that is being hosted by Lady Zena and myself. And the dinner is free. So please, let come out in droves Sunday and let us celebrate together. Amen. Well, as Pastor Robin said, we're we're back in the we're in the book of Daniel and we're in chapter two. And hear me, I am not rushing it. And the reason why I'm not rushing it, because we're not really in a Sunday school class where we need to know the golden text and so on. You know, we we, we really want to digest and be informed and, and so that we have a better understanding and appreciation of the scripture. And also when Try it because down. Because the book is also tied to, to other books in the Bible. When you read the other books in the Bible, you'll also have a better, better understanding. So we're going to spend a little time. Uh, last week, we spent some time talking about the head of gold. We said that Nebuchadnezzar had this dream that Daniel uh, begins to interpret. And um, the head is of gold, the chest and the arm is of silver. The waist and the tie of brass. Way too long to get down here. And the leg is of iron. And and so we're going to be dealing. Uh, last week we dealt with the head of gold, and we said the head of gold is is Nebuchadnezzar. 
and we said his kingdom lasts from six uh, six thirty six BC to five thirty nine BC, and we also shared that Nebuchadnezzar kingdom uh, represent the quality of human government. That his kingdom he conquered Persia, Egypt. Uh, and, and, and several other countries and that during his time those who were under his empire flourished uh, economically and that Nebuchadnezzar himself built about uh, the city of Babylon in, a, in what we may refer to as a in a rectangular form of or, or, or where it covers about 200 square miles and there were wash towers, there were about 87 feet thick walls that were placed there, rivers connecting and, and uh, skyscrapers and just beautiful edifice. The kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar is unlike any other human kingdom. As a matter of fact, we said last week that Nebuchadnezzar is referred to as the king of kings. Is And, and this also testifies of the quality of his government. Now, we spend a lot of time... Uh, with, with the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. And so we're going to go with the second part of the beast, which is the chest, or what we refer to as the breast and the arm. That part of it is of silver. And remember now, we're talking about the image of a man. The head is of gold. The man's chest, his breast and his arm is of silver. No. Let me just hasten to say that the last Babylonian king was Belshazzar. And we'll deal with that later on in Daniel. He was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 5. God writes a message on the wall which Daniel translated for Belshazzar. Which essentially says you have been weighed and measured and found wanting. Your kingdom will be divided and given to, to another. That very night, Belshazzar was killed by the media Persian army as they besieged the city of Babylon. Authority, therefore, was handed over uh, to the virus, the mead, who was partial, sorry, who was possibly a governor under the reign of King Cyrus. Yeah, there are those who believe that Cyrus could have been the virus, that his name could have been used interchangeably. So I am not going to be dogmatic on this point. No. This part of the statue, the chest, or the breast and the arm, which is of silver, the only explanation of this part, which is the chest and the arm in, in the text, is found in Daniel 39, where it says, but after you shall come another kingdom inferior to yours. And we said last week that while the quality of human government decreases, they increased in military might. And this is a testament to the the hardness of each material. Silver is harder than gold. But 
brass is harder than silver and iron is harder than brass. So don't expect the quality of human government to increase. Based on the prophecy of Daniel, it will diminish. There will be another government inferior to yours. Now, we'll explain later on how the media Persian government was inferior in, in so many ways. Now, I said a couple of weeks ago that uh, Babylon, when we talk about Babylon, we talk about Iraq. When we talk about Persia, we talk about Iran. Uh, so, so let's bear that in mind. That the first world power was Iraq. The second world power is Iran. And he formed an alliance with a couple of the countries like Turkey and, and Libya so to, to, to defeat their enemies. However, Daniel is telling us that even though they, there was this dual uh, part of the Medo Persian Empire that they were they did not have the quality of government as did Nebuchadnezzar. So the Medo Persian Empire conquered Babylon in five thirty nine BC and they last until three. 31 BC. Now, Media Persia controlled a large territory, far larger than did Babylon. So it was ex so it was not inferior in political and military might. As a matter of fact, most historians believe that uh, the Medes and the Persian, in terms of territory, they had twice as much as the Babylonian. All right. Let me, let, let's just refresh our mind before I kind of go further. So let me ask Pastor Robin to just read again. Are you there, Pastor Robin? Yes, I'm here. All right, so let's, let's read the interpretation that Daniel gave of the dream, and then we continue. We're reading chapter two. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter. Okay, so Daniel chapter two, verse reading from thirty-one. Yes, you saw, O king, and behold, a great image. This image mighty and of exceeding brightness stood before you and its appearance was frightening. The head of this image was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its middle and thighs of bronze, it, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. As you looked, a stone was cut out of cut out by no human hand and it struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver and the gold all together were broken in pieces and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This was All the right. dream. Okay. We continue, continue, continue. This was the dream. Now we, we will tell the king its interpretation. You, O king, the king 
of kings to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power, the might, and the glory, and to whose hand he has given, wherever they dwell, the children of man, the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens, making you rule over them all. You are the head of gold. Another kingdom inferior to you shall arise after you, and yet a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And there shall be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, because iron breaks to pieces and shatters all things. And like iron that crushes, it shall break and crush all these. As you saw the feet and toes partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, it shall be divided, shall be a divided kingdom, but some of the firmness of iron shall be in it, just as you saw iron mixed with the soft clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. As you saw the iron mixed with soft clay, so they will mix with one another in marriage. But they will not hold together, just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever, just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain by no human hand, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. A great God has made known to the king what shall be after this. The dream is certain and its interpretation is sure. <laughs> the dream is certain, certain and its interpretation is accurate. The accuracy of the dream, Daniel said, is guaranteed. Yes, And remember now that Daniel is speaking uh, to Nebuchadnezzar whom he said that God has made him Nebuchadnezzar, king of kings. And that God has predetermined that after him would come another kingdom that is inferior To his. Now, we talk about uh, Cyprus, which was the king of Persia. Um, he invaded the, the Medes and conquered the country of the Medes. And from then on, uh, the whole of the Medes and Persia became one country. Later on, that name was changed to Iran. So, if you want to read the history of Iran, you will see the name, the King Cyprus, as one of the greatest architects of Iran. He conquered Babylon in B.C. 3. 39, and his son, Cambys, overthrew Egypt and Lydia in 525 BC. Now, at the height of the Persian Empire, um, Cyprus became healed and died. Now, one of what there's something that I wanted to us to, to observe about Cyprus, about this king of Persia. And we we, we, we famously talk about the, the laws of the of Persia don't change. We remember that it was during the time while the Persian kingdom was in operation that Daniel himself was thrown into the lion's den. 
the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire during the time while the head was of the head of gold was in charge. Yeah. But Daniel himself uh, was thrown in the lions then, not during the time when the head of gold was in charge, but during the time when the brass, the silver rather, was in charge. So let, let, let's bear that in mind. Now, one of the things that Cyprus did, we, we talked last week about how many thousand different gods that Nebuchadnezzar had um, allowed to take place in, um, in, in, in Babylon and that there were hundreds of temples of different gods that were built in Babylon. And that is why um, the world religion is referred to in prophecies as Babylon and the whole world uh, uh, monetary system is also referred to as Babylon. Now, Cyprus, on the other hand, allowed the Jews to continue living and worshipping their God as they choose it. And if you read the book of, 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 of Isaiah, Isaiah called Cyprus God's shepherd and said that God would go before him and level mountains. So, he was very generous toward the Jews. It was during this time of uh, the Persian reign or the reign of the, the brass, the, the, the silver rather, that the Jews were allowed to return to their homeland. We remember uh, Nehemiah who was the cup bearer or the one who tasted the wine before the king had it. He was sent with a group to help restore Jerusalem. So Cyprus employed a policy of adaptation and reconciliation. He understood that his subject need to create their own identity uh, and, 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 and connect with their homeland and he gave them that privilege to do so. The media Persian kingdom, however, was Funded from tax from a tax system, and and so you, you you can understand why it's also referred to in the prophecy as the portion of silver. It taxed the people and collected the money to fund the empire. Uh, and the luxuries and the military um, programs and projects that they had. So, in terms of the brass, the iron, the, 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 in terms of the silver, the silver portion of the image is bigger than the head. And that also was fulfilled in the expansion of the Media Persian kingdom. It had your had your body has two arms. The, the media you had the Medes and the Persian. The two horns. 
and, 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 and I want us to kind of note how detailed the prophecy is being fulfilled. Daniel says the interpretation of the prophecy is accurate mm -hmm. and it is sure. Feel free at any time, Pastor Robin, to interrupt. Yes. <laughs> so, or, or anybody, any one of you, any one of you, not just Pastor Robin, anybody, just feel free at any time to interrupt me or to send send a question or whatever. Don't let me have a monologue. <laughs> now, despite the fact that the, 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 the empire had more territory and they were more military strong, it had internal problems. And as such, there was a problem of unity in the government. That sounds like what we're going through in the U.S. Can't decide whether you're going to solve the immigration problem. You want to, you want, you want to, the, 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 the president to deal with the immigration problem, but you can't come together, even among yourself. To put forth a bill to solve the problem. Internal mm. problem. Yes. The strength of a government is not so much in its military might as, as it is in the unity mm -hmm. of those to whom the government relies on. If there is division, then that government become weakened, and this was one of the problem with the with the Pers with the Middle Persian Empire. The growth of the empire was great, but they had internal problem, and that problem dominated the Middle Persian Empire. Now, we will get to it, but let me just quickly ask Pastor Robert to just jump over to, 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 to chapter 7 of Daniel, verse 5. And we'll, uh, we, I just want to point out something here. Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 5. Verse 5? Yeah. Okay. Uh, verse 5. And behold... Another mm -hmm. beast, a second mm -hmm. one, like a beer. Mm -hmm. It was raised up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, between its teeth, and mm -hmm. it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. All right. Now you notice, and we 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 we, we will come to that 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 prophecy later on. That the beer rose up on one side. And this speaks of the dominance of the Persian government. Mm -hmm. Even though it was a joint government between the Medes and the Persian, the, the Persian was the ones that dominated the government. Mm -hmm. Darius, the great, went on to rule the Persian Empire and increased its territory for many, many years. Many, many years. So, the fall, one of the fall of the, the Persian Empire or the Medo persian Empire was the fact that it could not keep the people within the government together. Nebuchadnezzar never had that problem. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. sought out for the brightest and the most uh, witty of them and placed them in government. And those who opposed him and those who did not carry out his, order, his orders were beheaded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, power struggles. Yeah, Pastor, but what we're seeing as well, Pastor, if you yes. 
um, notice the, the the nature of the image that Daniel saw and how mm -hmm. it plays out um, is that you have um, you see gold then silver and and it seems as though the, the the in terms of human value um, that the value uh, uh, of the, the the material yes is 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 it um, decreases. decreasing in value as mm. you go down towards the feet and and, Correct. and 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 that is also part of the 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 um, the problem in in terms of what is happening um, as it plays out the, even with the media and the person um, from Nebuchadnezzar being strong and powerful, you know, now you get to the Medium person, and although um, they have exerted some power, you are seeing that they are not as strong, and there is it, 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 things are 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 de devaluing in terms of even unity among the the the, the government. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Correct. No, no, Darius son was our Texas. Now, in the book of Esther, our Texas is called by the Hebrew name. I'm going to spell it so that I don't mispronounce it, and then I, I try to pronounce it. A-H-A-S-U A-H-A-S-U-R-U-S Arasus. All right. Now, one of the things we, we, we know about him is that he chose to marry to a Jewish girl by the name of Esther, who became later on the queen. And we know that Esther had a father figure who was a family member of hers who also worked mm -hmm. for the king according to Esther and that is found in Esther chapter 7 so the point the, the point that I want to bring out here is that when you read the book of Esther we're talking about during the time when the silver the second part of the image was in charge. Mm -hmm. When you read the book of Nehemiah, you're talking about this, the, the, the time when the silver was in charge. When you read the book uh, of um, Ezra, the scribe, you're talking about during the time when the Persian government was in charge. So whenever you go to this book, you also bear in mind the words of Daniel, the prophecy hmm. of this book is true. You know, you know, you know Pastor, I, I, I don't want that, that statement that um Daniel made yeah. to the king is yeah. rather compelling, you know. Um in terms of he says that it look here, King, what I'm telling you. I remember now there was a problem um yes. in 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 finding somebody to interpret the dream. And Daniel is saying to the king, look, I'm what I'm telling you about this dream, you can take it to the bank. It is certain. It is sure. You can trust it, not just now, but in the very foreseeable future and beyond. This dream will come to pass. Just this is D Daniel is not is not operating like some people that we know. Uh, no, no, he, 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 he's not mincing word. He's not saying it might come to pass. No, mm -hmm. he, he, he's declaring that it, it must come to pass. And he's telling the king. And remember, this is a very powerful king. And Daniel 
is very fearless. Uh, uh, in... and, and Pastor Robin, I want to butt in a little bit. Yes. This is a man whose life is also in jeopardy because he's a part of the Chaldeans. Right. And at this point, when Daniel is explaining to the king all the magicians, the, 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 the sorcerers, mm -hmm. all the wise men and, and those who practice magic, Magic and, and Nicomancy, yes, uh, all yes. of them live. All of them had a death sentence over their head. So Daniel yes. is coming to the king with a death sentence over his head when he's now speaking to the king. Go ahead. Yes, and 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 Pastor, it, it is very important for us to um, kind of put this in the context because, as you said, he, his life is in jeopardy, and he knows that one miss and he's a dead man but he has a relationship with mm -hmm. god and he has sought god he and his companions and he is humbly but fearless because he says oh great oh, oh, oh great god the a great god has made known to the king even accolades He's telling, yes, but a great God has made known to you, King, what shall be after this. And 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 the Daniel is under. I I I would think that he's under pressure, Pastor. And yes, and and, and, it, and you know, so 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 let's kind of visit our theology, because a lot of us have a theology that said God don't talk to sinners. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that the conversion of Nebuchadnezzar never take place until he was driven by insanity out of the yes. kingdom. Yes. Mm. And after 70 years, uh, not only was he restored, but he was converted. Mm. Now, this is a man who is, is, is a pagan. Mm -hmm. And Daniel is saying, the God whom I serve the God of heaven yes. has given you this revelation. And the revelation that he gives you is destined to be correct and to be precise. Yes. Uh, Pastor, can I just interject one little bit here? Because I noticed that, um, you know, and, and, and this has to do with how we operate too, but I noticed that Daniel did not say to him that I am giving you this interpretation. He says, a great God has made known to, to the you. king, mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. So Daniel is not even taking any credit. Um, yeah. He's, he's giving it all to God. And this is so important in terms of how we operate that we don't know anything really except God reveals it to us. To us. And and, and we must be careful in, in, in the way we operate, especially um, well, how we handle um, dreams and prophetic um, giftings, you know, that it is God who is doing this. It's not, it's not <laughs> us. We're just a channel. Yeah, And I just want to add that we do not have a monopoly on God. Amen. No. Mm. So we, we, we can say because we are tongue-talking or Pentecostal or because we are Christians that God is going to give to us. There are sometimes God give to the worst of sinner. Right. Mm -hmm. Dreams and visions and revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is correct. You see what you see when God <laughs> well, you know, you know, some of us say what God no say. <laughs> we say things that God didn't say. Right. <laughs> and, and because we, we believe that you know we can we can sway people emotion by just saying the Lord said. 
Mm. And we have to be careful of that. Daniel is saying that you got this from God, not from me. And what you got from God, you can bank on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the second kingdom could never come as one kingdom because Nebuchadnezzar saw the, the chest and it has an arm. Yes. It has two arms. So it could never come as one kingdom. It moved from the head. It moved from the head. And it, it, it could never be as small as the head, mm. even though the head is of gold. Therefore, this kingdom, even though inferior than his one, must expand. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I want us to understand that this is not just this prophecy of, of Nebuchadnezzar. You are right in it. it it's, it's not that it, it's, it's all, it, it, you, you, you don't have a place. You are right in it. It's not all and about the past. It's, it's not about the past. Some things have passed. But you're right in it. And we'll, we'll talk more about, uh, about where you are in it. Remember that the, the children of Israel, after 70 years, during the time of the Persian kingdom, they returned back to their homeland. And they returned to their homeland. Mm -hmm. So, but however, the empire of the Persian kingdom lasts for over 200 years. It started in B.C., 539 and ended in BC uh, uh, um, 5 330 330 no here, here, here is here is another point that I want to point out because Daniel says that there will come a kingdom that is less that is inferior to yours Each time an empire died, there was a power struggle that erupted over the succession of the throne. Mm -hmm. And what this what the what this does is that it kept weakening the empire for these two hundred years, and so. It's no wonder that Alexander the Great would cease the moment during this waning period of the uh, per Media Persian Empire to overthrow it. So, let me just point a couple of things out. Even in Daniel's lifetime, even in Daniel's lifetime, the prophecy was being fulfilled. Because Daniel saw, lived to see the silver come into existence. Mm. He witnessed the Medes and the Persian coming into play. As a matter of fact, when you read the book of Daniel, and we'll deal with that later on, that he was sent for because they heard of the power and the wit and the, the wisdom that Daniel had. And you remembered that it was the Persian king who wanted to, serve, to save Daniel, but because of the lords of the land, he could not save Daniel that night. And he did not sleep that night, but early in the morning he woke up and went to the lion's den and cried out for Daniel and asked him if his God was able to serve, to deliver him. 
Mm-hmm. So Daniel witnessed the fulfillment of a part of the prophecy. And we are witnessing. Did I say we? Yes. We mm-hmm. are witnessing the continuation of the fulfillment of the prophecy of the image of Nebuchadnezzar. That is why I find it very interesting. No. I'm going to go to the next section of the image, which is the waist and the tie of brass. 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 No, I want us to take note that Daniel said he made known to Nebuchadnezzar what will come in the last days. God said, I'm going to give you a revelation of everything that is to come. Why is God doing that? Why would God do that? God, Nebuchadnezzar, God made Nebuchadnezzar king of kings. But he also made Nebuchadnezzar the first Gentile uh, king to have world dominance. In other words, Nebuchadnezzar begins the time of the Gentile and the time of the Gentile must continue until the coming of Jesus Christ. In other words, the dominance and the rulership of Gentile supremacy begins with Nebuchadnezzar and with it, it will end when the rock struck the stone, uh, struck the, the high iron and clay. Mm-hmm. So, we're now at the third part of the image, which is the waist of the statue, which represents the Grecian Empire. No, you know, I might be rumbling a little bit, but I, but I just want us to get some stuff. This is the third, the third Middle East country to rule the world and the last. Let me repeat. The world was ruled as a... And we, by the by the Grecian Empire, and I'll, I'll say more about it, as far as India. Mm. The Middle East ruled rule the world. So Gentile supremacy begins with Iraq, Iraq continues with Iran became the second world power and then Greece became the third world power. So the third kingdom conquered the entire Middle East and in Daniel chapter 8 Daniel experienced a vision during the night the, the reign of Nebuchadnezzar's grandson Belshazzar which again point to the coming of the Medo Persian Empire and how a Grecian king would conquer it. Let, 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 let's quickly, even though we don't get there yet, let's quickly turn to chapter 8 of Daniel, verses 3 to verse 8. Daniel chapter 8, Pastor Robin, verses 3 mm-hmm. to verse 8. All right. I raised my eyes and saw, and behold, a ram standing on the bank of the canal. It had two right. horns. Right. And both, Look, yes. Hold, hold on, hold on, Pastor Robin. So, because we because we we're, we're picking out a couple of verses, I just want to mm-hmm. kind of lay a backdrop. Yeah. The first beast that Daniel saw was a lion. A lion is king. I will deal with that later on. Is king of the beasts, representing Nebuchadnezzar. The second beast that Daniel saw was a bear that, that stood up at one side. 
representing the Medo Persian Empire and the dominance of the Persian Empire. And we, we, as I said, we'll, we'll say more about that when we get to it. This third beast that Daniel saw is, is what? Prim. A goat? Mm -hmm. Continue, continue. I just wanted to set, set, set the background. I raised my eyes and saw, and behold, a ram, goat, mm -hmm. standing on the bank of the canal. It had two horns, and both horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram charging westward and northward mm. and southward. Mm. No beast could stand before him, and there was no one who could rescue from his power. He did as he pleased and became great. All right. Go okay. No, that's good. No, this represented the Grecian Empire under Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great was famous not only for destroying the Medo-Persian Empire, but for how quick he did it. As a matter of fact, within 11 years, he conquered the then world. And, uh, and, and, and so the, the, the ram that Daniel saw is descriptive of uh, the reign of Alexander the Great who moved from every direction from the mm -hmm. west which is which, which begins from Persia to as far as modern day Iran to as far as uh, India, and it says that the, the goat was a flying goat, and it represents the speed at which yes. Alexander the Great conquered the then world. It was terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Mm -hmm. So, one of the while it is said that Alexander the Great did not have a huge army. But because of the agility yes. of the army, because of the speed in which the army moved, they were able to conquer the dead world in a very short period of time. Now, so part of the strategy of the Grecian Empire and the Grecian army was to dominate the world to submission by their speed and their power, not by the quality of their government. And again, we see that the brass is harder than the silver. So, They were able to go south. Yes. Isn't, isn't, it, isn't, isn't that what he said? Yes. Which 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 meant that it went southern. Which we when you talk about south, we talk about Europe. Right. So northward, southward, westward. Yes. So, so India to as far as Europe was conquered by the Grecian Empire. No. The Greek also made many weapons of brass, including their famous shield. No. One of the things that I want us to note here is that our famous New Testament Bible was written in Greek. Which is a testament of the prophecy of Daniel. 
it is said that while the Romans conquered the Greek, they could not conquer their language. And so the Grecian language became the dominant language of the day. And so you can understand why our Old New Testament scriptures are written not in Arabic, not in Hebrew, but in Greek. No, the fragile Grecian Empire after the death of Alexander the Great was splintered into four. And so for a while, you had four generals that ruled. And later on, they merged, two of them merged. So you had two generals that ruled in the latter part of the 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 Grecian Empire, and that amounts for the two arms of the goat. Now, as I said, when we deal with chapter 7 of Daniel, we're going to talk about the little arm, but we, but we're not, we won't, I won't touch that today. So after Alexander's death, Greece was divided into four parts. Each was ruled by different men. Four rulers kept quarreling until two major parts emerged. All right. That goes for the Grecian Empire. So we have Nebuchadnezzar, the image of gold, ending the Babylonian reign with his grandson, Belshazzar. Then we have the media Persian Empire mm -hmm. under Cyprus, the great, continuing during the time of Daniel. And also be, that they became very generous or uh, kind toward the Jews and allowed the Jews to go and rebuild back there, it rebuild their city. Then we have Alexander the Great mm. conquering the media Persian Empire. No, why am I kind of laying emphasis on this? This period of the head of gold, the chest and the breast of silver and the waist and the tie. Uh, sorry, a brass, a brass, a brass. This ends the reign and the rulership of the Middle East. Mm. No Middle Eastern country mm. ever can't come into world dominance. You notice that I mentioned earlier on that Alexander the Great under the Grecian Empire went westward to as far as Europe. When they went to Europe, they awakened the spirit of Europe. Mm -hmm. A giant that is as cruel as the force of an iron rose up. And this gave birth to the Roman Empire that conquered 
the Grecian Empire. And I'm not going to label on, on, on this next week. I'll spend more on it. But mm -hmm. this, the nickname of the Roman Empire was the Hyan Monarchy. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus was born mm -hmm. during the time of this prophecy. Mm -hmm. Follow me carefully because we're about to close this Bible study. I just want to... Jesus was born during the time when Rome was in charge and it was the Romans who killed him. Mm -hmm. While Caesar Augustus was governor and commanded for the taxations of the Jews to take place, a little no-name couple who was of the house of David because of the taxation, they went to pay taxes and as such they ended in Bethlehem. No. The stone, and, and, I, I, and we'll deal with that next week, the stone did not struck the iron, which meant that Jesus, when he came to earth, his mission was not to destroy the Roman government. Mm -hmm. That's why when disciples said to him, will thou restore or unto us? the kingdom of David, he says to them, it is not for me to tell you when that is going to be done. But if you read the book of Daniel, this is my, this is my, my part, not Jesus' part. If you read the book of Daniel, and if you read chapter 2 of Daniel, you will see and you will have a glimpse of the final destruction of the uh, of the high end and the clay. The scripture said it smashed the gold, the brass, the silver, the high end, and the iron and clay to pieces till there was no sight, no remnant of any of that. Mm -hmm. So, we know, we know that Jesus is coming. But what we also know is that Jesus came during the third fulfillment of Nebuchadnezzar's prophecy. Or the, the fourth fulfillment, rather, the not fourth. the third. Mm -hmm. The fourth fulfillment of Nebuchadnezzar's prophecy. And I shared with you last week that when the disciples said to Jesus, what shall be the sign of your coming? Amen. And Jesus pointed them to the prophecy of Daniel. And he said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, then you know that the prophecy is about to be fulfilled. All right. So, Next week, when we come, we're going to finish up with the high end. 
Because the Jew, the Jews who are hoping to have a Messiah would free them from the high and fist of the Roman Empire. And they felt that, the, that Jesus, some of them felt that Jesus being the one whom he claimed to be mm -hmm. would be the one to crush the iron fist right. and the high end of the Roman Empire. However, Jesus did not crush it. And I want us to note something. That this empire is the most cruel of all of the empires. And so it testified that while iron is stronger than other metals, making it a great material to create weapons, with steel from it, which is what is used today to fight war. Think about it. The, the iron, the iron is not just a representation of the Roman government, but it is also a representation of military force. Yes, sir. The mm -hmm. best and most powerful weapons are concealed in, with iron. No. The two legs, and as I said, we'll finish it up next week. The two legs of the image appear, and that is represent East and Western Europe. One may say, Pastor, but you know, you're saying a lot of stuff, but you know, how, how, how does that relate to us? It relates to us in the sense that the great players of the world today is not America. Even though America is maybe may referred to as a, the superpower of the world. The great player of the world is not China. Even though China is expanding economically and mm. globally in terms of its influence and building up military uh, uh, might. The great players of the world is Europe. Right. Both East and, West. and Western Europe. Keep your eyes on Europe. Because Europe is where everything is going to take place. And there is going to be a amalgamation of political ideologies that will smet themselves together, but they will not be able to work compatible. And so when you have countries like Germany and France coming under the same treaty of the European Federation, mm. it's going to be a problem. Not just going to be a problem with the dollars and their monetary value. It's going to be a problem with their ideologies. So, we are right there We're right there. And I, I, I'm just kind of kind of just tapping and and, and, and it a little bit as I turn over to Pastor Robin. We're right there. 
Mm -hmm. We're right in the prophecy of Daniel. When not only are, are we seeing and news taking place, but we are seeing the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy coming into play as we watch our television, as we listen to the news, as we see what's going on in Europe. We're seeing the fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy coming into play. And we are hearing Daniel says, in the days of this king, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom that shall never be moved. Next week, we will wrap up chapter two of Nebuchadnezzar, of Nebuchadnezzar's vision and we'll continue. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Let me invite everybody to unmute and let us reason just for a moment before we close up. Daniel says, all of this that you're hearing and coming into understanding, it is certain and its interpretation is sure. You can be sure that everything that has been taught that we have read and understood according to the dream of this pagan king and Daniel's interpretation, it is going to be, it has been manifesting itself exactly as Daniel has said. And therefore, as um, Pastor just indicated, we are sure right now that we are living in those days hmm. when God was about to set up that kingdom that will last forever. That kingdom that is coming will never be destroyed. No one will be able to withstand it or destroy it, and it shall remain a righteous kingdom. So let us open our mics and let us just reason together for a moment and then we'll wrap up. Um, the floor is open. Anybody care to comment? Good night, she... everybody. Good night. Good, good night. night. Good night. I just want to say I am learning so much from this our Bible studies and I just want the good Lord to give me the knowledge, the wisdom and the understanding to continue. God is very good to me, and God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Thank you. Amen. Thank God you bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bishop, um, where does India fall in all of this? India is not, is not a world player in this, yeah. but let us, let us also uh, understand that uh, it was Europe's quest to kind of create a, 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 a sea route mm. to, to India mm -hmm. that led them to us. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Pastor, we must remember our history as well as it yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> to 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 you um India because India was ruled by the British, the British, and they 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 still have influence. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, that's why that's why I was asking, you know, considering. As Pastor in, the, in there is one of those countries that has nuclear power. Yeah. Exactly. And has been growing. <laughs> yes. However, even as powerful as Napoleon was, mm -hmm. and even as powerful as Hitler was, and they too, they both sought world dominance. Mm -hmm. They could not become a world leader mm -hmm. because Daniel only saw four kingdoms. Yes. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. 
even as powerful as the great United States of America is, <laughs> if it would, if, if it is, if, if let's say it is the ambition of the U.S. to gain world supremacy, they cannot. Mm -hmm. Because the prophecy of Daniel does not allow it. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. the prophecy of Daniel allows room for Europe East so, and West Europe to come so back together yes. and to become a dominant force. Mm -hmm. yes. So, wow. it doesn't make room for Russia. It doesn't make room for India. It doesn't make room for the United um, States. But currently, um, China is no longer the most populous country. It is India. Um, yeah. For those who, who you know follow the demographics, um, United States, of course, you know as well, just like India, is really uh, an outgrowth of Europe. If you really understand what had happened historically, you know it's the same people. Um, okay, but those are just footnotes. <laughs> um, the floor is still open, um, Bridget. Um, if there's anyone who care to share anything um, directly or indirectly, um, the floor uh, is open. Let me just say this while you're preparing to share. That remnant of the gold and the silver and the brands will also play a role leading up to the coming of Christ. Yes. Mm. So while they not while they will not be dominant, they will also play a role. And yes. That is why you have the old issue with Iraq and Iran. Mm. And up to this weekend, we have the president bombing certain section of Iraq, um, and and also certain you know the whole the whole the whole thing in the Middle East that most. People believe is that the Hamas is funded by the um, the Iranians. Mm -hmm. um, so the Iranians is the silver. Mm -hmm. The Iraqis is the head of gold. Is the gold. So the those these two countries, despite the the fact that. And you notice that these countries are oil wealthy. Mm -hmm. In other words, they are two of the wealthiest nations on the earth. Mm -hmm. the, most of these countries where this, this prophecy borders, what they have to create wealth is natural resources. Mm -hmm. So, yes, sir. Yes. So bear that in mind. Yes, bear in mind. Okay, They're sure. very powerful. Mm -hmm. That little fat man up there is always threatening from North Korea. Right. <laughs> he's just a... He's just a puppet. First he's, a by, yeah, he's a byproduct. Yeah. <laughs> Inclu in, including President Putin. Yeah. Byproduct. Byproduct. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. Um, the floor is open. Yes. Um, go right there, uh, Sister Miller. Oh, sorry. Um, Sister, um, Sister Willa, you were saying something? No. Okay. Uh, Sister uh, Millicent? Yes, Pastor. Good, uh, good night. Um, just a question, um, very brief, uh, because, you know, sometimes I'm coming home and, you know, I get cut off, so I, I don't hear everything. So um, I think this is pertaining to last week. Um, you know, Pastor, we have always been saying the coming of the Lord is so near, is so near. But I think I heard you said something like, um, it won't happen until the man of perdition is revealed. Am I right? Yes. 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 It won't yeah. happen until until the stone. It will happen when the stone crushes the feet mm -hmm. of the image. However, remember that we dealt with the book of Revelation. 
Yes. And one of the things we point out is 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 in, in the book of Revelation is that the return of Christ, the, the physical return of Christ, will mm -hmm. take place after the rapture of the church. Right. Correct. Yes, Pastor. I wanted you to make that distinction because oftentimes when we talk so, about the, the coming of Christ, we're thinking because about... when Christ comes back, uh -huh. he will be crushing all human government right. and he will be establishing his government for a thousand years. Okay. Okay. Because, Pastor, you know what? We tend to like. Um, so, when, so, the so day so of the Lord, the day of the yeah. Lord won't take place. No. Uh -huh. But the rapture of the church can take place anytime. 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 Oh, okay. Anytime. okay. Thank you. Thank you so oh. much. Um, Bishop, you also said that the Romans, it was during the reign of the Romans, mm -hmm. they killed Christ. But yes. that Christ was born. Was born. And that he died during that time. Yes. Okay. And that he died during that time. Yeah. So the, the oh. leg, the, and that's the leg section. Yes, but there is so many times I've heard that is the Jews who kill Christ. We all believe in you, right? Well, 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 well put it this way. What <laughs> happened, you know? The, uh, so what the Romans did is that they gave, uh, let's say, uh, the Herod. Yes to rule over a certain region of where the Jews were. Yeah. Is correct. So so but Herod was not Herod was answerable to yeah. the Roman government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was why even when Paul himself was being tried by by his Jewish folks because he had dual citizenship, which meant he was also a citizen of Rome yeah. and a Jew, he went uh, to, to be tried in Rome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yes, the, 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 the Roman government was in charge. Right. And, right. And, and just like, just like, like other government they put they, they put some, you, you know folks over certain juridic uh, over certain um, areas and give them jurisdictions so to 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 operate. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. There's a there's a Roman judicial system. Yeah, and the Pilate. instigator the instigators were the Jews. Pilate was not a Jew. Herod, yeah. we could say, was a half Jew. Mm -hmm. You got that, Sister Wilder? Yes, yes. All right, all right. Okay. Um, you know, I ask that question because sometimes I I come into discussion and, and they'll say, oh, they're saying that the Jews kill Christ and whatever, whatever. So I, that's why I wanted the clarification. It was the Roman government who was ruling at the time, but the Jews were but on. Remember, here. remember that Pilate, the governor, yes, got a dream, yes, and his wife warned him not to have yes. anything to do with this just man, and yes. Pilate handed Jesus over to the Jews. Yes, right. yes, yes, yeah. You got it. <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, yes. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, the floor is open for another moment. If there's someone that want to share, go right ahead. We're about wrapping up. Let's, let's share. Let's open up. We have, we have a couple minutes. All right. Well, Pastor, um, we're going to uh, leave it there and we're going to pick it up uh, next week uh, because we're dealing with certainty of revelation and what is coming to pass, what has come to pass and what 
we are looking forward to coming to pass. We are living in those moments when things can happen anytime. And one of those events is, of course, is that the rapture of the church can take place anytime. And and, and as we study um, these things and as we learn, one of we want to be mindful. We want to be ready so that when the dream is coming to pass, which can be any time, that we want to be make sure, we want to make sure that we're prepared. All right. Sister Wilda, I'm gonna ask you to close off in prayer for me. Amen. Bishop. <laughs> okay. Father, we stretch our hands to you. No other help we know. If we draw close to you, Lord God, we know that you will bring the revelations and the things that we need to guide us in the right path. Lord, I thank you for Bishop Hilton. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the direction that you have given us mm -hmm. as our guide. And I pray, loving God, that as we gather tonight again and we glean from your word, may we not take it lightly, but may we just think about what we learned, what we were taught tonight. We look back on the history and we see where you show Hmm. time map hmm. of life from then to your return. I pray God that we will not we will not just take this teaching as a history lesson but we will take it as a guide. We will take it we will see the spiritual side of it as a preparation of the way we live our lives daily. Lord God, I just want to thank you. I just want to pray that I want to just lift up your name because in these lessons, you show us how much you love us. And I pray, mighty God, that as we go from week to week, let us really look on your word. You prepared it for us. And it's a reason you didn't take us blindly. So we have no excuse. So may we just continue to study your word, glean from the teaching and apply to our lives daily. Oh God, bless our homes. Those and whatever forum they are on. I pray God for our intelligence to be opened because for such a time as this, we need this. May you bless us. May you continue to love on us. May we continue to serve you, Lord God, in the best way we can. And may we study, the, study your word as we go day by day. Oh God, may you bless each and every one. Bless the home. Bless the families. Lord God, when this night is over, it is on YouTube. And I pray, God, that families will come together and listen to the teaching and discuss the teaching to enrich our lives. May you continue to bless Bishop Hilton. May you continue to bless Pastor Robin. May you continue to keep us firm, in your faith, knowing that we have no excuse. We say thanks. And as we go throughout the week, Lord, may you go with us. In your precious name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, uh, sister. Well, we are going to leave it there this evening and invite you to join us again next week at uh, same time, same place at 7 and invite someone, tell them that we're studying the book of Daniel. Come on over, 
um, find the link. Um, it can be you can get the link on WhatsApp or request it. I will send it out to you. All right. Um, thank you so much, and God bless you. Until next time. God bless. God bless you. Have God a bless great you all. Week. Have a good time.